So now we're going to look at a library of functions. So functions that you should be familiar with of the shape of the graph and characteristics of that function. And then we're going to look at piecewise defined functions. And so the library of functions, and that's probably all that we're going to be able to get through today, but the library of functions that you should be familiar with are your linear functions. So recall your linear, linear functions can be written in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. So that was one form of our linear function. When we're looking at this function, we can tell certain things. If our value of our slope is bigger than zero, then the linear function is increasing. If our slope, our value m was less than zero, the function decreases. And if our slope was equal to zero, the function is constant. If the function is constant, recall that this is in the form of y is equal to some constant, let's call it k. Okay. So looking at the linear functions where our slope is not equal to zero, the domain is going to be all real numbers. And we can express that from negative infinity to infinity. And our range is negative infinity to infinity. If our slope is equal to zero, though, our domain, we still can put any value in for x. So our domain is the same negative infinity to infinity. But our range in this case, the only y value that you're getting back is that value k. So I'm just going to say it's the set, the number k. your identity function, which is actually a linear function. This is if you have f of x is equal to x. So this is a linear function also. We also call it the identity function. In this case, our slope is one and our domain and range are all real numbers. You have your square function. So if our function was a square function, it is equal to f of x equals x squared. This is a parabola shape. If we looked at the domain, the domain, there's no trouble spots. So we can have everything from negative infinity to infinity. And our range, well, if I plug in a negative number and I square it, it's positive. So the, the smallest value that it would hit for x squared is zero. So I'm gonna have a bracket zero and then to infinity. Notice that the square function f of x equals x squared, this is actually an even function. This is symmetrical across the y-axis. We have the cube function. The cube function would be in the form of f of x is equal to x cubed. In this case, our domain 
There's no trouble spot. So our domain are all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. In this case, we would hit all of our Y values. So this is also negative infinity to infinity. So when you graph it, you get something similar to what this looks like. And notice that this is symmetrical across the origin. So the Q function is an odd function. We got your square root function. So this is in the form of f of x is equal to the square root of x. When we're looking at the domain here, well, we would have trouble spots because we have a radical and it's an even powered radicals. So we couldn't have a negative underneath that even powered radical and get back a real number. And so we could have zero in there or anything larger. So our domain is from zero, including a zero to infinity. The range, well, if I'm plugging in positive numbers or zero, I'm gonna get back a positive number or zero. And so my range is the same from zero to infinity. If you look at this graph, you have a point at the origin and it looks similar to this. So notice that this function, this is increasing everywhere. You should be familiar with your reciprocal function. And this is in the form of f of x equals one over x. The domain, so in here we do have a trouble spot. We can't have zero in the denominator. That's the only problem I would have if x was zero. So we just have to exclude zero. So we're looking at everything from negative infinity to zero, but not including, so we use that parentheses. Union, we're looking at everything close to zero, but not zero. So parentheses zero to infinity. The range is actually the same thing as our domain. We'll hit all of our Y values except for zero. And so we have negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity. If we looked at the graph of this, It looks similar to this. So this actually has a vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And we'll look at that more when we talk about graphing rational functions and finding asymptotes. But here is a, an example, or this is what our reciprocal function looks like. And notice that this is symmetrical across the origin. And so this is an odd function. And the last function that you should be familiar with is the absolute value function. And so this is in the form of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So our domain, there's no trouble spots. So it's from negative infinity to infinity. But our range, any value we plug in there, we're gonna get back a positive number or zero. And so we can have zero, so bracket zero to infinity. This is a V shape or the vertex of the V. 
is the origin. Let's pretend that's straight. Um, and so noticing this is symmetrical with the y-axis. And so this is an even function. Okay, so those were functions that you need to be familiar with and shapes of them and properties of their graphs. And we'll get into piecewise functions in the next class period.